Good morning, millennials. Welcome back to the Morning Toast. I know what you're thinking. Man, Jackie looks hairy today, but <laughs> Jackie is not here. Ben has filled in very last minute for her. We are very excited to have you. Thank you so much for you being are, here. You are so welcome. It was such great timing. Jackie called me this morning. She had a dental moment. Emergency. And um, me and Ben happened to be at a brisk together for our dear friends, Ben and Margie. Congratulations, by the way. Um, so we got some breakfast and now we're here. I've never been up for so many hours before the toast. Like usually I just wake up, get ready and go. But we got up. We had to be at the brisk by eight. We got there at 830. But the brisk was called for eight. Oh, eight God. on the card. And I'm I just said, saying. I said, let's get there at eight. Ben was like, no, nobody gets to a brisk at eight. It says eight o'clock. You think Maybe the Moyle schmoozes. Maybe he tells a few jokes. For those who don't know, a bris is a ceremonial cutting of the foreskin for all Jewish babies. It happens eight days after they're born. The Moyle is the rabbi who... He's the cutter. He does the cutting. The snipping. He does the... And then the baby... Yeah, it's like it's so quiet in a bris like while they're cutting because nobody can really see what's going on. So they're cutting and then all of a sudden you know what happened because the baby goes... It's literally this quick. It fucking hurts, I imagine. Yeah, but so... We get there, 8.20, very appropriate. 8.30. Whatever, over. Wasn't over, because then they have a breakfast afterwards, so we got there for the breakfast, which was good. But we missed the... <laughs> yeah, we did, which was sad. But also, I think brisses are sad, like the baby's in pain, and I, don't, I wasn't that upset that we missed it. It is sad. Yeah. It is. Do you remember your bris? Of ben course. Had a bris. Well. Where was it? I don't remember. You can't remember. You're eight days old. Do you miss your foreskin? Of course. Every day? No. Honestly, foreskins are uh, actually, sorry. It's controversial what you're about to say. Controversial. I was just going to say, for me, I enjoy not having a foreskin. Yeah. I covered this. It's, for me, I enjoy not having a foreskin. It's, um, um, it contributes to um, bad hygiene. You, you'd think, but people will also say the other uh, Yeah, that, that's true. That it's fine that we're not living like in the medieval times where like nobody can like use a bar of soap in their foreskin. Like it. I don't know how deep we should go into this conversation, but apparently you can be quite hygienic and still have a foreskin, but ben, I would just prefer not to have one. I think that uh, my schmecky, ben, I think my schmecky looks far better This is without Ben it. trying to be politically correct. I think that my schmecky looks far better don't, with, Is there a, a part in the Bible where someone takes their foreskin off with a rock? What? Yeah, it's, par, in, it's in the Bible. That is just not possible. No, he like takes a rock and takes his foreskin off. It's a thing. That sounds like... Pure torture. Biblical days, man. Things were crazy. Yeah. Women were having children at, at, at the age of 120. See, but it makes sense that biblically you would remove your foreskin for hygienic purposes because <laughs> what if like you're in the desert and like a couple of like pieces of sand oh, totally. just like got stuck in Infection. your foreskin and then you have a sandy foreskin and all of a sudden you're known forever as sandy foreskin. Sandy foreskin <laughs> sounds like the name of like a Jewish retiree in Boca. Oh, you know my cousin Sandy foreskin. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh. Well, thank you for joining me today. I'm of so course. glad we could talk about foreskins. Yes. You know, I don't think Jackie's the type of girl who just talks about foreskins, you know? No, but she collects them. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're going to deliver the Fast Five. I chose the Fast Five today. Jackie usually does it. It's really hard. Like, not that much happens between today and yesterday. And I tried to pick stories that I think you could speak to more. Sure. And I told Ben the stories uh, right before we started. He goes, you're not going to talk about how Emma Stone is engaged? She is. So, Such a cute moment on Instagram. Her and her fiance, they're like this. With the ring. She is uh, engaged to a writer for SNL. I saw. So I don't know if he's like necessarily famous because he's like 40,000 Instagram followers, but he's successful, you know? It's just SNL is so confusing. You don't know who does what. Right. You don't know who doesn't do what. You don't know who in the credits does what. Because like the most famous person on SNL like right now is Pete Davidson and he is never on it. He wasn't even on the last episode. But like he's not famous for the right reasons. No, he's already for Grande SNL. famous. Yeah, which like the SNL community doesn't give a shit about. True. Right? Yeah. It's like, is he that famous? Like for SNL? I don't know. Like Colin Jost is probably the most famous no, I think Keenan Thompson. Oh, yeah. Famous. I mean, he puts the... Sh I'm surprised he doesn't have a, a bad back from putting the show on his back for five years. It's on his back. Him and Kate McKinnon. They put the show on their back. Kate McKinnon is amazing. She's a genius. Hysterical. Do you love her? You want to marry her? Yeah, I mean, SNL is just... Yeah. Wi oh, my God. Will Ferrell. Did you guys talk about that at all? Uh, no, we didn't talk about Will Ferrell. Oh, my God. The Will Ferrell SNL. Pure gold. The Native that American, Native American scene. Was so funny. Your hands... Bone, bone dry. dry. <laughs> it was good. Yes. Um, okay, so I think, I mean, it's only been five minutes, but do you think? Yeah, whatever you want. You want to dive in? Do you think it's time? You want to take a head first dive? <laughs> like a... What was that hand motion? <laughs> <laughs> okay, do you think it's time, Ben, though? 
It's your show. I don't know. Okay, I do. I think it's time. Okay. I don't want to make it like a big deal, but I think it's time. Cool. It is time. Do you know what that's from? It is time? Yeah. No. Oh my God. You claim to have grown oh, up in New York. I'm sorry. Oh I worked God. out the other day. The other really day. Ben worked out yesterday for the two first days ago. time. Two days. Two. He has not stopped oh, complaining that his arms hurt. It's just like, you know when you... Yeah, there's an adjustment period, and I've never gotten over that adjustment period. I always work out with weights, and then I don't do it because I get in so much pain. But really, extending your arms straight, it's just... You did the live method. It's, it's unimaginable. Yes, the live method. Such a great place. It's just like... It is really elective torture, but yeah. I've been told that I need to change my vocabulary, that it's really self-inflicted. Uh, no, self-help. Like this is yeah. a good thing, but yeah. like me calling it like torture, it's not. Like I'm happy. I'm helping that, myself. I'm happy that you are working out and trying to get yourself healthy. But like, if I have to listen to you complain about how much your arms hurt, like I mean, for another week. I mean, my muscles. They're, they're just, just so big. They're just so big and sore. They're bulging. They're inflamed. Just like your foreskin. They're inflamed. Okay, so it's time. It is time. Oh, you don't know what it is time is from? What is it? Remember, um, like. On the back of the taxi TV, they always have that commercial for Lion King, and they have... Um, yes, of course. They have Rafiki going, it is time. Yes. Yeah, Good so one. on the toast we say, it is time. That's great. For the fast five stories that you need to know before you wake up and take a bite out of your morning toast. <laughs> okay, we have like a sound effect that does that. We don't need you to do it. <laughs> no, thank you. And you're doing it wrong. It's more like... <laughs> what about... <laughs> um, okay, yes, it's time for the fast five, fast five stories, and like I said, it's it's just time. Mm. But I would be I would be remiss, I would be devastated, I would even be heartbroken if I didn't let everyone know that today's episode is brought to you by Titties oh. Third Love, one of our favorite brands here at the Morning Toast. We we are strictly Third Love bra wearing company for well, not today, but our two hosts usually have big jugs. Well, you have you have little little man boobs. Look, Third Love, amazing for men and women. <laughs> Um, over 14 million women have taken their Fit Finder quiz to date. Basically, you answer a few simple questions to find your perfect bra size in 60 seconds. As someone who's been wearing bras since the age of 13, I have recently come to learn that the most important thing when finding a bra is knowing your correct size. And I was wearing an incorrect size pretty much since high school. And it's crazy that I found out my correct size just by taking a quiz, like not even getting measured because I was getting incorrectly measured in stores. Third Love helps you identify your breast size and shape and then finds the perfect style that fits your body. Every customer has 60 days to wear it, wash it, put it to the test. And if you don't love it, return it and Third Love will wash it and donate it to a woman in need. Mm. Third Love, isn't that nice? It is. I'm happy to hear that they wash them. Right. <laughs> you never know. I mean, me, I got a bunch of boob sweat, so. Yeah. I mean, who doesn't? Third Love helps you identify, oh, I said that already. Every customer has 60 days to wear it, wash it, put it to the test. Their team of expert fit stylists are dedicated to helping you find your perfect fit. Mm. They're available every day to help via text, chat, or phone call, and their returns and exchanges are very easy and very free. Um, it's hands down the most comfortable bra you own. I wear the t-shirt bra. The straps do not dig into my shoulders, which is half the battle, and the underwire does not dig into my like under armpit. It's, it can be really painful. Like People don't understand, being a woman is so hard sometimes and really painful. Third Love donates all their gently used return bras to women in need supporting charities in their local San Francisco Bay Area and across the United States. So far, they have donated over $15 million in bras, which is amazing, so you can know that you're doing good while also getting your titties all perky. Third Love knows that there's a perfect bra for everyone, so right now they are offering our listeners 15% off your first order. Go to thirdlove.com slash morningtoast now to find your perfect fitting bra and then get 15% off your first purchase. That's thirdlove.com slash morningtoast for 15% off today. Can't stress it enough how important finding the right bra is. And thanks to Third Love, my titties are in check. Are yours? That should be their slogan. Totally. Our titties are in check. Are yours? Totally. Okay, first Sounds story. Sounds great. First story is a story. It's a developing story. We covered the initial breaking news on our Patreon while we were in Utah. And it was a story about Justin Timberlake weirdly being photographed holding hands with his co-star, Alicia Wainwright. They were together, I believe, in New Orleans. Um, his hand was also on her thigh. It was just really weird. It took the world by mm -hmm. storm. And now people have pretty much forgotten about it, but now we're talking about it again because Justin Timberlake released a statement, which I did think was a weird PR move because I'd pretty much forgotten about it. It had been like over a week. Um, and if you were going to release a statement, like it should have been then. But now a week later, it's like you're just reminding us that it happened. Like I, I had actually forgotten about it. I feel like it truly is for his family more than it is for anybody else. I feel like just because people have forgotten about it, the internet is so fucking mean. Yeah. And they are so fucking famous that I'm sure that Jessica Biel and his kids are getting some of the craziest DMs. Yeah. And like, just like nasty stuff. And I'm sure that he just wanted to publicly come forward and sort of 
end this for his family. Well, he released a statement, and it's so funny how, like, times have changed, because, like, five years ago, releasing a statement was, like, what you did through your publicist to, like, various media outlets, but now you just write a note on and your notes app it. and screenshot it, which yeah. is so crazy, and that's what he did. Like, even the biggest star in the world does that. Isn't that mm -hmm. crazy? Yeah. Um, this is what it said. I stay away from gossip as much as I can. Okay, that's, like, a bad way to start it, because... Anyway, it's also not true. Yeah, but also, it's, like, it's not gossip. You did it. Like, you were just caught. That's not gossip. He's acting like he's, like, you know, lowering himself to speak to us. Sure. Continue. Um, but for my family, I feel it is important to address recent rumors that are hurting the people that I love. A few weeks ago, I displayed a strong lapse in judgment, but let me be clear. Nothing happened between me and my co-star. I drank way too much at night, and I regret my behavior. I should have known better. This is not the example I want to set for my son. I apologize to my amazing wife and family for putting them through such an embarrassing situation, and I am focusing on being the best husband and father I can be. This was not that. Are they lovers in this show? I don't know because it's still being filmed. Um, but I was actually thinking that, like, if it comes out to be a movie or whatever it is, and like they're making out, and, like we'll be able to see the chemistry. Like sometimes you could tell, like in Mr. and Mrs. Smith with Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt, like you knew they were fucking on stage and fucking behind the scenes. Totally. I just think, like, I don't know. It's very shady. Mm -hmm. But if he's in character, and like they are. Like, maybe they rehearsed earlier, he got really drunk. Like, it's v definitely really shady. Yeah. I don't know. But it's also interesting, like, I think of this like if this was us, and that's why I chose this story. Like, okay, you were out with a woman. First of all, you're dead. What are you doing out with a woman? I'll kill you. <laughs> and then it's like you're holding hands with the woman or hand on the thigh. Like, I'm sorry, you're dead. Like, I don't care if he was drunk. Like, that's weird. But then I think, like, if rules were reversed, like, if I was out with a man, a straight man, I don't think it's that weird, you know? Like, it depends who the straight man is. Like, I always think, like, you don't have any, like, serious friends that are girls because you're not allowed, and I will kill you. I was going to say, I, I used to have a lot of them. You know, you're not allowed. They're gone. Um, but, like, one of my best friends in the world, Abe, is a guy. He's straight, and, like, it's not weird. But he's your friend, too. Like, I just think it's it's definitely, it seems worse because he's a man. Do you know what I mean? Like, if Jessica Biel was out with her co-star, like, holding hands, it could just be, like, cute. Like, friendly. I don't know. It's really tough. Yeah. It's really tough. Like, I would kill you if this was you. When I, when I think of it in the lens of Timberlake, it feels, like, like weird. But, yeah, well, I agree. Also, people who are, like, very invested in celebrity gossip and, like, read blind items, they know that they definitely have, you know, um, fidelity, questionable fidelity in their marriage. Like, that's what... So, if you're just... If you're someone who cares a lot about pop culture, you might have known that, and this might not have been surprising, but it is surprising that he got caught. I guess when you're out in New Orleans, like at a bar, you're not expecting to be paparazzi, like as if you were in West Hollywood. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. Sad stuff. Doing the toast is weird with you because, like, me and Jackie are always um, like fighting for words, and like you really let me finish my sentences, and like, um, that's nice. Yeah, no. I'm um, always like talking over Jackie. It's really annoying. I just, I just don't really have that much to say on this topic. I'm just like thinking about it. Like, yeah, it's a little creepy. It's a little strange. At the same time, if he was drunk and in role. I really don't think No, he's he not in role. It was after hours. No, I get it. But like, if you spent the entire day holding hands, making out, maybe there's a sex scene in this movie. You never know. You're like in that actor mindset. I'm sure that if he was in West Hollywood and he saw his wife that morning, he's out of character. But I just feel like, and I'm not saying that what he did wasn't wrong. It was wrong. I just feel like maybe I'm not an actor. I know it seems like I am, <laughs> but I'm not. And I feel like once you get really in character and then you get drunk, it, holding hands is, is very strange, actually. I don't know. Honestly, Justin Timberlake... I take back everything Justin I said. Justin Timberlake is not Robert De Niro. Like, he's barely an actor. He's more of a boy band singer. Like, he's excited to be... He's been in, like, four movies. Yeah. I don't think you can really consider him a method actor. He also can't hold hands. Yeah, it's weird. I, I think that it would be less alarming to me if they were caught making out. I'm thinking about this more and more. The holding hands is so intimate. Holding hands is very intimate. Like, you can be hooking up with someone and you would never hold their hand. No, holding... There's something about it that's... Holding hands... I don't know. Justin Timberlake, stop it. <laughs> what are you, nuts? Um, okay, the second story is a story that is really kind of weird, but I chose it more because we had a very similar... Um, situation happened to us over Thanksgiving as Anna Faris because mm. according to Us Weekly, Anna Faris was, quote, saved from carbon monoxide poisoning on Thanksgiving. Oh. Quote, I'm feeling very fortunate, she says. Thank God. She's had a, she's had a year. Mm. Feeling grateful. Anna Faris had a whole lot to be grateful thankful for this Thanksgiving, especially after she survived a terrifying situation involving carbon monoxide. Mm. 
Okay, you don't have to do that after <laughs> I say everything. <laughs> after the Thanksgiving holiday, the House Bunny star took to Twitter to tell fans about her scary encounter with carbon monoxide while staying with loved ones at a rented home in Lake Tahoe, California. Oh, how terrible. <laughs> USA Today... I had to stay in my home in Tahoe. Well, she rented it. It wasn't hers. Oh, sorry. USA Today reported that the flammable gas leaked into the residence, causing two people Holy to be admitted shit. to the hospital. Quote, I'm not quite sure how to express gratitude to the North Lake Tahoe Fire Department. The mom actress, 43, tweeted on November 29th, we were saved from carbon Mattress. monoxide. Actress. Mattress. Mom actress. Mattress. Um, we were saved from carbon monoxide, she said. Ferris regarded the incident as a stupidly dramatic story, but noted her gratitude for coming out unharmed. I'm feeling very fortunate, she added. The North Tahoe Fire Department shared Ferris's tweet while adding a statement of their own. So thankful for a happy ending to this carbon monoxide CO incident. Never assume you are safe. Check your alarms whenever you travel. Okay, so very... This we did not have something similar. Very sad for Anna um, We had Anna a Faris. faulty alarm. I'm very sad for Anna Faris. I'm really glad that she's okay. But it just does mirror something that happened to us because we... Sure, sure. We were in Utah. We rented a house and the alarm was going off and it was so weird and we didn't know what it was and it was like this really fucking annoying beeping sound. When you hear a beeping, you always assume it's the fire alarm, the smoke detector battery, you know? Totally. When we checked, it wasn't and it was like the... It was like the house alarm and it said CO... Leak or something. The, no, the alert read, fire department, C-O. So what do we think? We think that there's carbon monoxide. Right, that's what C-O is. And I saw, that, yeah, monoxide, one oxide, C-O. My you're a genius. Yes. Um, genius. What was, oh, and I have seen, you know, uh, bor a star is born, where he kills, you know, he commits suicide by running the carbon monoxide in his truck. So I know that it can be deadly. Oh, I forgot that that's how he killed himself. What yeah. a sad movie. Terrible movie with the dog sitting outside. Ugh. Oh, terrible. Ugh. Um, so I, we took it very seriously. Actually, I pretty much just went downstairs and did my own thing. But Olivia and Zach were really all over it. And they called the fire department. And we had these, like, um, you know, Salt Lake police, uh, fire officers, fire Men? Firemen. Actually, there was a firewoman, so fire people come into the house, and they had their little detectors. They checked the fireplaces, and it was a false alarm, but still, a good lesson in fire safety. I remember I was downstairs, like, playing video games, shooting the shit. Like, I knew the fire department was there, but I knew that there wasn't any fucking carbon monoxide but that's in this wh house. Why did you know that? I just knew, and uh, Shapiro texted me uh, saying... Uh, Come upstairs. The fire department's here. And like I thought that like we were fucked, but we weren't. There's nothing going on. They're no. just like there with their monitors making sure that there's no carbon monoxide. The truth is, you're not going to have a carbon monoxide leak in a new rented house. No, but they Anna checked Ferris that shit. did. Anna Ferris did. In Lake Tahoe. So if a rich celebrity... Oh, was in... No, I thought that she took refuge to her Lake Tahoe rented no, home. No, it happened in Lake Tahoe. Listen. I understand. That's what I'm talking about when I say you don't listen. I understand. It happened when she was on vacation renting a house in Lake Tahoe. Very similar situation. It is very to us. similar. All right, look. You take back what you said, and honestly, we are very thankful to the Salt Lake City Fire Department for hooking us up. Yes, thank you. Coming Salt Lake. out on a holiday weekend. Do Firemen you, are and women are such heroes. How do you think such heroes? Can you how, imagine like choosing that as your job? No, it's amazing. It's so heroic, so selfless. Do you? How do you think that Salt Lake got its name? Um, the lake is notoriously salty. Do you think so? No, I know it is. How do you know? It's like everyone knows that. A more salty lake than the traditional lake? Do you want me to Google it? I'm just saying, is it the saltiest lake or is it just a salt lake? Why is salt lake? I'm 100% sure it has something to do that with it. That it's the saltiest lake. Okay, according to Google, the Great Salt... Okay, okay. There is a lake in Salt Lake City called the Great Salt Lake. So it's the Salt Lake City. It was originally named... Okay, so it's the city that surrounds the Salt Lake. Wait, how interesting. It was originally named Great Salt Lake City by the president of the Church of Jesus Christ Latter-day Saints, Brigham Young, Mormon, Thank God. who led a group of Mormon pioneers to the Salt Lake Valley southeast of Lake. Oh, so Salt Lake City was gotten its name by Brigham Young. There you go. And there's also a Brigham Young University, right? There is. BYU. Go Cougars. Is that true? Of course. If I named random, like, um, sports teams, like from various... It's tough. ...leagues, like, you'll 100% know the name of the team... It's tough. College is hard. Okay, I'm gonna just gonna I'm gonna give you three random. I'm gonna start easy. What is the name of the um, the uh, Cal? No, no, that's easy. Uh, of the Tennessee baseball team in the MLB. I'm pretty sure that the oh, in the, there is no Tennessee in the MLB. Oh, there's not. No, but Tennessee College Volunteers. That's their name. The Volunteers. The, vol the Volunteers. Are they Volunteers? I mean, no. 
<laughs> I'm sure somebody was. Um, okay, next up. What is the name of the, um, the, the football team of the college uh, of Colgate University? Big Reds? No, I'll give you a clue. You Rip. have a t-shirt. Uh, a long sleeve black t shirt of another team with the Raiders? same name. Yes, the Colgate Raiders. Really? Yes. Wow, very nice. And finally, the NYU basketball team. Uh, uh, the Purple Losers. Is that their name? <laughs> Close. The Violets. <laughs> yeah, there you go. The Purple Losers. <laughs> Jesus. If you play for an NYU sports team, go to a different school. Well, yeah, obviously you're not like trying to go anywhere with your sports. Go you're to just, a different school. Maybe you got a scholarship. Like maybe you're just doing it not to get anywhere, but just to get through college. I suppose. Um, okay, well, I'm glad we got to the bottom of the Salt Lake City debacle. And like, I think can you imagine if you like had to say that you're like on the NYU basketball team? Actually, like, as I a, don't give a hoot. As a former NYU student, it was very prestigious. Like, you could always tell who the basketball kids were. They were very tall, and they practice in Cole's gym where Adam Sandler plays basketball for fun. Oh so wow! They, so they were. By the way, that's cool. You love Adam Sandler. I love him more than anything. That doesn't mean that he is like the bar for basketball. No, but like in a small school like NYU, like it was prestigious. It's not a small school. Yeah, it is. It is? Compared to like big schools. It's not small. Yeah, it is. Isn't it like tens of thousands of people? Well, it's not like a liberal arts school, but it's not Michigan University, you know? I think it's like 20,000 people. Am I wrong? I think it's less. Less? I think it's like 10 or 15. Mm-hmm. A lot of artsy kids. Yeah. I took organic chemistry at NYU. You did? Yeah, that was fun. That was fun. That was ex that was the exact time when I decided that I was not going to be a dentist. Yeah, those were the days. Yeah, it was tough. Uh, I was the only person in my class that didn't have, like, pink hair. Everybody. <laughs> well, yes, us NYU students, we're very self-expressive, and I guess that's why we're so great now. You are. The purple losers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's jump into the next story, which um, I would love to hear your take on because it's kind of weird. This is from CNBC. Peloton's holiday ad made some onlookers cringe, but it won't overall hurt the brand. So obviously you know what Peloton is. Of course. It's a stationary bike. They cost like three grand. People get it in their house and it has this iPad and you basically can tune into like live soul cycle classes from your house. It costs $40 a month in addition to like $3,000 bike. I believe it was bought by Equinox. Mm -hmm. um, it's, they're just killing it, which is so crazy because I don't know anyone who has one or would even think about spending that kind of money. Like, you would have to, like, do... It's just not a city thing, which is why when oh, that's Olivia true. mentioned that she wanted to get a Peloton, we were like, what the fuck? That's Where true. Where are you going to put that huge machine? Now they also make um, treadmills. But even a treadmill, like, you have to be some other kind of rich... Yeah, oh my God. ...to have your own gym in your apartment in the city. Not only that, to have city. space, not even a gym, to have space for a fucking treadmill. And not shit up your apartment. Like, yeah. I'm sure that there is someone that has a treadmill in the middle of their living room. Totally. But then it's like, you have a treadmill in your living room. Totally. It's no longer your living room. So in order to both have a nice home and a treadmill, you have to be some other level of rich unless maybe your building is willing to put it into their building gym. Oh, and then you could let everyone use it. And then everybody can use Actually, it. Actually, you know the what's so crazy? Is, do you all split the forty dollar fee? Well this is an interesting thing. I have um, seen apartment buildings where part of their amenities in the gym they had a full Peloton room. So they used to have a spinning studio and now they have a spinning studio made full of Peloton. So like people can be doing different classes at different times. Oh. It was like forty Pelotons. It was like a hundred thousand dollar room. Yeah that's a ton. Yeah more actually like hundred and fifty. Really I bet dumb. you that the Pelotons gave it to them for free. Maybe. It's such a great promo. Honestly, I work too hard on like not sweating all day and like smelling good to ever actively try and like sm sweat in my house. You know, our air conditioning is always on like to the, even now it's freezing in New York. We always have air conditioning on to the highest degree. Like I, I carry my scent bird around. Like I'm not about to just go start sweating by choice. <sighs> Except you've been, you've been disobeying the only house rule. That we can't turn off the air. You've been turning off the air a it's lot. It's really And cold. you've been turning on the heat. I only turn off the, on the heat in our living room. Like we have to live, we live in an igloo. As it should be. Well, we have a rule in our house. You're not allowed to turn on the air because both of us are very averse to sweating. Turn off the air. Turn off the air. We are both very averse to sweating. Um, going on the road and doing shows, like I'm always fucking sweating. That's why I love Scentbird, which is a sponsor of our show. Um, because scent is the most powerful sense you can have. A smell can bring on a flood of memories, influence your mood, and of course enhance your natural style. Mm -hmm. That's actually very true that scent can um, like bring back memories. Whenever I think of truffle... That For sure. That pizza that you eat from Serafina, I always think of the time I ate it and then threw up on the side of the road in Montauk Highway in the Hamptons. On a, on a lighter note, that is a disgusting story. <laughs> Rose water that you use... On my face, my, Mario Badescu. My grandma used to use rose bar soap. Uh-huh. And that smell, every oh. single time I smell it, I remember her. Oh, that's lovely. Your beautiful aunt, aunt Grandma Ruthie. Aunt, oh, not Aunt Grandma. Just I was going to say aunt. Yeah. Just, yes, Grandma Ruthie. She died when I was like six years old, and the fact that I Sorry. still remember that smell scent is a powerful sense. It's amazing. It literally twenty years. 
With Scentbird, you can have great taste and mix up your fragrance routine without breaking the bank. Whether it's Tom Ford, Gucci, or Versace, Scentbird.com keeps you smelling good month after month. Mm. Scentbird is a luxury fragrance subscription service for perfumes and colognes. They have more than 600 designer brands for you to choose from. Um, you choose a perfume you want to try, they'll send you a 30-day supply, but if you're not sure what type of scent you're looking for, you can sort and find your new fragrance by brand, style, occasion, season, mm -hmm. and more. Plus, they have products from other categories like skincare, wellness, and makeup. They carry brands like Kopari, which we love, mm. the natural deodorant that I wear that you always steal. Yes. Yes. Um, they also carry Which, products. Which, by the way, don't steal somebody's natural deodorant. It's not a quick fix. <laughs> this is a dedicate. You got to either dedicate or not. Um, Glam Glow, they carry products from Tarte, Glow Recipe, tons of others. Um, I've been on Scentbird since I started with the Toast, like almost a year ago now, and I always have perfume bottles. It's so nice to have travel size um, perfume bottles that don't get taken away at TSA, and then before a show or between meet and greets, like I get so sweaty at a show, then I have to go do a meet and greet. It's like these people paid $75 for a meet and greet. I can't smell like this. No, and you smell great. Thank you very much, I Thanks appreciate that. Bird. I wear, um, they have a Bulgari scent that's delightful, and they just, they're adding tons of new scents. They just added a Malin Goats. Um, I love Malin Goats, they make the best chapstick. They just added a Malin Goats um, fragrance. So the deal is that they send you a smaller? It's a monthly supply of like 120 sprays, and basically that's more than enough to last you throughout the month, and then if you like the scent, you can get an another one the next month or order more, but it's like, it's expensive perfumes, but you're getting it for a subscription price. Yeah, it's wise. Like I bought that. Uh, uh, Creed is what you bought Creed. and you didn't even use it. It was $400. I don't know what I was thinking. I'm now so deep in debt. You need Scentbird. And that's because I bought this fucking Creed. I put it on and then we realized that I smelled like somebody that we knew. That it was all, just weird that getting into bed with someone I know. It's just like, you know what? That person that just has like that, that scent. That smell, yeah. And, and like, I realized that I liked it, but I can't wear somebody else's scent. Yeah. And I wish that I had Scentbird because then I could have gotten one this big. So now you're in debt and I got an exclusive offer for you just for our listeners. You can get 30% off your first month today. Oh. That's only $10 for your first designer fragrance. Go to Scentbird.com slash Steen or just use our code Steen for 30% off your first month. Again, that's Scentbird, S-C-E-N-T-B-I-R-D dot com slash Steen, S-T-E-E-N for you to try your first perfume or cologne for just $10. Sign on. Smell amazing. Nice. Okay, back to the stories. So, but that is a nice product. So basically, this Peloton controversy goes like this. Yes. Peloton is a maker. This is from CNBC. That maker of high-end home fitness equipment is getting criticized for a new holiday ad that implores viewers to give the gift of Peloton. But the flap probably won't hurt the company, despite onlookers complaining about what they saw as undertones of sexism and classism in the ad. Indeed, Peloton stock rose 4.6% on Monday after the Thanksgiving weekend when much of the criticism surfaced and is now up more than 25% since the stock debuted in September. As of Tuesday afternoon, Peloton stock was down more than 9% amid broker stock. Okay, whatever. But I want to tell you what the ad is. In the ad, a woman receives a Peloton as a Christmas gift from her husband. Okay. So already, I just think like a man giving a woman a Peloton is like... Maybe she asked for it. Okay. Then it documents her usage of the bike, which costs $2,245 with a monthly $39 membership fee to access classes. Okay. The woman in the ad remarks she didn't realize how much this would change her. According to iSpot.tv, the ad first ran November 4th and has run more than 7,000 times, accounting for an estimated $13 million in spending. Ahmed, you spend $13 million and your ad only runs 7,000 times on TV? TV is expensive, man. That's crazy. On social media, some commented that the woman's before and after looks were identical or remarked that it was strange that a spouse seemed to be pursuing his partner with the gift to lose some weight. These are some things people said online. The lady in the Peloton ad is already toned and fit in the before part, making it hard to believe she would be nervous about a basic spin class, though that's probably the least weird thing about the ad. Another person. Nothing says maybe you should lose a few pounds like gifting your already rail thin life partner a Peloton. It's <laughs> funny. <laughs> some commented on how nervous and unhappy the woman seemed to be while documenting her workout. Okay, so there's, oh my God, the lady looks so weird. This is another tweet. I'm nervous. I've never ridden a stationary bike. It is the scariest thing I've ever done in my entire life, even worse than giving birth. I'm terrified. Please help me, Peloton. Others said the ad was just too over the top aspirational given the, set, given the setting of the home. Mm -hmm. Peloton could seriously save a ton of marketing money by showing a text-only commercial with the verbiage, rich people shit that won't fit anywhere in your measly 2,000 square foot house. That's true. So I guess people were upset that like they documented a transformation before and after, but the woman was like incredibly thin before and incredibly thin after. It was just like, I guess, a little tone deaf. Look, Pelot Peloton is a tone deaf company. What, because the, what the fuck are they supposed to do? If you have some very, very large woman being gifted a Peloton, then it's, it's like, even worse. It's yeah. like, give the gift 
to a fat woman. Yeah, that's you, so true. So, you're, they're screwed either way. What I really feel bad for are the people that have been making stationary bikes for 100 years, <laughs> and all of a sudden, Peloton, people are just like, ooh, it's new. That's people true. Have, people had stationary bikes forever. Like, what's the difference? Because I can look in this virtual thing iPad. and take a class. Like, it's not, it doesn't make, that's I feel actually, terrible. That's a good call. Right? Yeah. How many people came before Peloton that just... Yeah, but I hear what you're saying. Like, they couldn't have won either way because if they had done the opposite, it would have been more tone deaf. But there have been commercials for, like, Jillian Michaels is always on those weird, like, aerobic, like, yeah. uh, like you can make a commercial for an ad. home That's, an, that's fitness. an infomercial, though. No, it's not. They are regular commercials for it. And, like, you can make a commercial for a, an expensive at-home fitness machine and not offend people. There is a way to do it because Jillian Michaels has been doing it for years. I suppose. Look... I think that they just know exactly who their demographic is. Yeah. When you charge that amount of money and charge that monthly subscription and are putting yourself in luxury buildings in Manhattan, you are clearly trying to appeal to a very, very specific person. Right, and that's why it's not shocking that the controversy even affected, didn't affect that their no, stock. No, because they don't their, care. They don't care. It's literally a rich person thing. And not only that, you got to be rich and skinny. So it's like literally, it's 1% of the 1%. Actually, most of uh, 50% of the 1%. And great. If you get 50% of the 1% to spend $3,000 a year plus $40 a month, you're rich as hell. Totally. I just can't think of anything I would ever want less <coughs> than a Peloton. Didn't I tell you you couldn't cough on the show? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. By the way, that no, you said I couldn't clear my throat. Yeah, and you've been good. Sometimes. I have no, uh, like, you can't control when you cough. No, but it's, it's like. It's very that. dusty in here. Isn't it dusty? No, everywhere you go you think is dusty because you're always like. There's, <coughs> there's a lot of dust. No, there's not. There's, this is the cleanest studio in all of Manhattan. Peloton is very interesting. It's yeah. so big. I know, and I just can't imagine like wanting one. No, like it is really for such a specific person. You have such a big home in suburbia. You have nothing. All of the women from Desperate Housewives would have a Peloton. Oh my God. Because By the way, you say it's so weird. Peloton? Peloton. I don't think so. I think it's Peloton. You're saying it like skeleton. No, like Peloton. Peloton. Oh, wait. Like Pelican. Peloton. Peloton. Yeah, thank you. Oh my God, you're bothering me so Peloton. much. Peloton. Peloton, not Peloton. Whatever. For it's a very Owen. specific person, you have to have so much space that you don't know what to do with it. Yes, so true. And then you have to have so much money that you don't know what to do with and it. And you also need to have like so much time to be like fucking soul cycling every day. It also doesn't make any sense. Equinox is cheaper. Well, so Equinox, which now owns SoulCycle, I do believe also bought Peloton for $4 billion. But why does it like... It really is truly a suburbia thing because it must be, it takes you so long to get to an Equinox. Well, I guess if you're the type of person who would soul cycle every day at 30, let me get my calculator out. It's $35 to do a soul cycle. And let's say you're doing $35, seven days, six days a week. You take but one you, day off. But you can take cycling classes there's at Equinox. So you could, if, you're, if you soul cycle every day, you could spend 11 grand a year on soul cycle. That's Jesus crazy. Christ. Wow. Versus the Peloton is Which around is, three grand. Right. I guess, All like, in. I mean, this is truly just a rich person problem. One, um, like I said, I just can't relate to. But, like, no, but it's also a very specific, it's suburbia, rich. I don't think it. it has to do with suburbia, because if you're rich in New York, you have a place to put it. No, but you have to be really rich. You have to be able to have the gym in your apartment. No, Who do you know that has a gym in their apartment? No, nobody. But if, if you're really rich, you could just have a spare bedroom and put your Peloton in it. Yeah, but that is so losery. <laughs> yeah, of course. You can, go, mean, you can go three blocks to an Equinox this whole thing and is ride losery. the bike. This whole thing is losery. Or you could take a city bike for $3. By the way, just, yeah, this is so strange. Yeah. Tone deaf. Hate to see it. Hate to see it. Hate to see it. Let's move on because I picked this story specifically for you because I know we keep talking about our vacation, but over the course of our vacation, we um, we had a kind of a renaissance with the game Monopoly. Obviously, oh. as kids, we all played it, but oh. something about... By the way, who loves Monopoly? Who's been pushing it forever? Ben loves it so much, and he finally got us all to play while we were away, and we just fell in love with Monopoly. Like the It best. was these like games that went on for hours, and it was so heated, and it was really like exciting. I don't think I've ever played it as an adult the right way. Like As a kid, you never bought houses. Like You didn't really understand. You just, no. like, you just passed go and took your $200. But now we played it like fully as adults like with the rules, and it was actually like a lot of fun and kind of like an educational game. I love it. So it I, becomes very sad, though. Like, you're yeah. winning everybody. Houses, hotels, boardwalk. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> you land on boardwalk one time at the hotel. You have to start mortgaging your property, selling off your homes. You go from four homes to three to two to one. And true, you, truly, if you lose, you after a long game, like a four-hour game, if you lose... You leave that game feeling like you just lost some it's, serious real money. It's really depressing. Speaking of real money. 
Oh, so that's the story. Okay, so this Crazy. is from E! Online. John Travolta is so rich, he plays Monopoly with real money. When John Travolta passes go, he actually collects $200. During an appearance on, when, an appearance on Wednesday's The Late Late Show, the Grease alumni in a completely random share... Wait, by the way, the Grease alumni? Yeah, I thought that was like a weird... Um, that's his tagline? What else would he be known for? I don't know. Everything? Hairspray. No. Uh, what else is he in? He's in... How is he so rich, now that I think about it? He's in the most iconic movie ever that somehow is... like. Oh, Saturday Night Fever? No, with the drugs. All the drugs. What? Samuel L. Jackson. What? Drugs. I'll Google it. Pulp Fiction? Thank you. Pulp Fiction. But do you make so much money from like a few good yeah, movies? Pulp yeah, Pulp Fiction? Okay. Holy smokes, what a movie. Okay, so... He revealed that he, when he plays Monopoly, he switches out the fake money for real money. Yes, oh. he has that much expendable cash. Rich. Fellow guests on the couch, Aaron Tyler Johnson and Sam Taylor Johnson, were the ones to bring the classic board game into the conversation. Speaking of their holiday traditions, the couple told host James Corden that when they play Monopoly during the holiday season, it usually lasts three days and gets highly competitive. That's so funny. Then John Travolta chimed in with his own idea for upping the stakes. Did you ever replace the money with real money, he asked. Without missing a beat, Sam said no, and the actor responded, that's the way to do it. And then, saying what we were all thinking, James quipped, John, we get it. You're rich. We get it. Needing all the possible tea about this, the host then asked, hang on, you've played Monopoly with real cash? His expensive habit got even less relatable when the Pulp Fiction actor responded, yes, but look, it's $20, it's $100. I think the totality is $2,000, I think, if you replace the whole thing. By the way, it's not. No, you. everyone gets $1,500, but then with free parking and the bank. The bank. Yeah. I watched a YouTube video, so me and Zach Weinerb, uh, Mames, uh, we were so obsessed with Monopoly that we started watching Monopoly strategy videos. On YouTube? On YouTube, and one of the videos was this YouTuber that had five people from, like, I guess, that were big fans of his vlog mm -hmm. come and play Monopoly for real money. Oh, wow. And you realize that, yeah, they start with $1,500 each. The bank needs to have so much money, the winner walked away with, like, eleven grand. Wow. Because, if, think about it. Like, yeah. you have to have... Uh, for free parking, you have to have for every bank, single time you pass go. All the properties. All the, yeah, it's a lot of money. Wow, that's crazy. I mean, actually, it sounds so fun. It's so fun. But like, but, but I think it would be just as fun if you lowered the whole thing to $150. Yeah, they should come up with a version, actually, that's made to be played with real, real money, where every person can buy in for like $100, and all the prices have now been lowered and adjusted, so that like you can you could either lose your 100 or make 500 Yeah. Like it, poker. Exactly. That so, sounds so fun. So fun. I need someone to do the math and like change all the prices of the properties. You just you can just divide everything by ten. That's so cool. We should yeah, try that. We should. Um, so then, completely blown away, the host James Corden asked John Travolta, "What do you like in Vegas?" And he goes, "I don't do that. He doesn't gamble. I think. I mean, he's a Scientologist. I don't know if you're allowed to gamble, but this does sound like gambling. It's so. the same exact thing. But just you're not playing in a Monopoly casino. for money. I'm really surprised that they still let John Travolta like go on late night shows and pretend that he's not like a Me Tooer because he's like a big one. Is he? Yeah, but like it hasn't been brought to the forefront yet. But like many young men have accused him of so they're masseuses. I actually read one of the uh, young men. Yeah. Huh? Well, ever well, most people know. Well, I'm not about to out someone, but most people know. Um, I read one of the accounts of one of the young men who came out against John Travolta, and it was like heartbreaking. He was like a young guy. He w he's like a freelance masseuse um, in Philadelphia and he got a call asking if he would do like a celebrity client. He was like, oh my God, of course. And he was like so excited. And then there were just like so many weird things that happened like leading up to the the massage. And then the massage happened and like it was just wildly inappropriate. Like he was touching, John Travolta was touching him. Like it was, and, and a few people have come out against him, but like he pretty much stays under the radar. Like he's got that Scientology like protection bubble. That is so crazy. No, I know. And like, you didn't even know that, right? No, but it's just like, I don't get it. It goes back to Justin. Of course, it's totally different. But do Justin Timberlake and John Travolta not think that when they do weird right. things that people are going to find out about it? No, it's like, even if you're a regular person, you do something weird, everyone you know is going to know. Like, you're a celebrity now. Like, people are going to talk about you tenfold. Huh. Shocking. Also, being a freelance masseuse is... It's very Phoebe Buffay. You know, very. Oh, uh, yeah. Very. And she can tell you that happened with Paolo in the first season. Paolo it's, grabbed her ass. It did. But when he was dating Rachel. Yes, but also when she got that big corporate job in the masseur place, she... She well, sold she, her soul. She sold her soul, but then uh, made out with that guy that ended up being married. Yeah, 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 yeah. It goes both ways, my friends. Um, also, this is a great question for you because we spoke about this on the toast the other day, um, asking if, if you could have any job in the world, 
which job would you want to have the least? And like most people answer, it's like shoveling shit at the circus, like sanitation worker, even though they have great benefits and make a lot of money. Um, my answer has yeah. always been the same, and I, it's that I would literally never, ever, ever want to work as like a runner on a beach who like sets up chairs and towels. It's so hot. Yeah, no, there is one job in the world that is the worst job in the world. And I, I can't believe that people said shoveling shit at the circus and a garbage man. A garbage man or a woman it's makes like, living. like 80 to 90 grand, has they, great benefits. Right, they work for the government. They have amazing health insurance. Like, it's, okay, it's smelly. Right. I'm sure that eventually- You get used to it. You get used to the smell. There is no worse job- I'm so excited to hear what you're In the entire say. world. I'd prefer to be in prison. Not solitary confinement, because I think it's the same thing. A toll booth operator oh. might be the worst job on the planet. But you also work for the government. It doesn't matter. So you get you those benefits. You talk to no one. No, you talk to people when they come through. No, you don't. Yeah. No, you literally, it's not It's not the old days, it's easy pass. Oh, yeah. People just yeah. come and go, there's no talking. You sit alone in silence on the highway for 10 straight hours. That's a good point. I, I, I love that you had an answer for that. That's why we're married. I've, I've thought of that before. It's yeah. a very... Lonely life. It is. Yeah, also the thought of being in solitary confinement in prison is also my worst nightmare. That's, but it seems very similar to me. Do you ever see the episode of SVU when um, Stabler, I think it is, that goes undercover and he gets put in solitary confinement and they, they leave him in for a day because they know he's undercover so they only put him in for one day and he comes out and he was like screaming, I can't believe you left me in there for a week. Yeah. It was only a day. Mm -hmm. So scary. That's like I mean, my worst nightmare. Staring at fucking white walls. Oh my I, God. Not even white. They're like duty brown. Is it, are they? Well, I don't know. I've never been to prison, but I mm. imagine they're not like sparkly white. Sorry if you guys see me like flexing my calf. It's just is your still calf my hurting workout. you too? Yeah, it's from my workout. It's very, it's very sore. Um, our fifth and final story is always a little. Okay, you don't know that we do this because I know you never watch our show. I do. So you know what I'm about to do? Yeah. Okay, then do it with me. One, okay, one, okay. Two, our fifth three. and final story is a little bit of. Biz news. biz news. No, you didn't know. You didn't know. <laughs> it's biz news. Business I news. I chose it for you. It's actually like a little tech news. And as always, our uh, biz news is sponsored. And today it's brought to you by Legacy Box, an amazing subscription service that more, sorry, not subscription service, service that many more people need to know about because I can't believe that we've lived with this problem as millennials, like our whole lives. And I know you can relate. Um, Legacy Box, you can get a lifetime of old family memories, videotapes, photos, and more digitized to a thumb drive, cloud download, or or a DVD to share and enjoy for future generations. This is perfect gift for the holidays. Like if you have a mom or an aunt or a grandma who has like tons of old like VHSs or like camcorder tapes just sitting around and you have absolutely no idea what to do with them, send in your legacy box. They will digitize them for you and that's such a nice gift to get for someone you really care about. The process from start to finish is so easy. You go online, purchase the box that you need. They send you a legacy box kit. You fill it with all your media, slap on the prepaid mailing label and then send it back to them. They make it so easy for you. In a couple weeks, you will get all your originals back, plus perfectly preserved digital copies, ready to watch, share, and relive. Legacy Box keep you informed throughout the process with regular email updates, and over 700,000 families have trusted Legacy Box with their prized possessions. They have been in business for over a decade, and it is the industry leader in a professionally digitized, antiquated media. Growing up, we had so many VHS tapes in our house, and like honestly, we left them in storage. Like, what do you do with that kind of stuff? Like, you, we went to Best Buy one year, and we got this whole converter. It was so torturous just to watch one home video. Yep. Um, and I actually think this is such a good idea. Like, it I, is. Right? Like, how sweet. I feel like your mom would love that as a gift. The photos in particular, um, I think that my parents have an entire closet. Full of just printed of, photos. Of, of photos. Of of photo books. Um, of, what did I, I said photo books. Photo albums. Photo albums. It's also like, what do you do with like, your grandparents' photos. Like, I know. There's a lot of photos. Yeah. And like, if you Imagine if the, you could have it on a thumb drive. Yeah, it would be, it would be cool. Um, okay, be so cool. actually I think it might be a great gift from your mom. I don't know if she's watching, but spoiler alert, Ava, we might get this for you because Ava Black Friday, Cyber Monday deal. Forget about doorbusters. Head to LegacyBox.com for their best deal of the year. Your life's biggest moments call for some big savings. You can get 60% off Black Friday and Cyber, Cyber Monday orders. While everyone else is going crazy trying to get the best deals with this Black Friday and Cyber Monday, you can relax knowing you saved big on all your memories. After all, technology can be replaced with the next best thing. But a lifetime of one-of-a-kind memories, that is irreplaceable. Order your Legacy Box today to take advantage of Legacy Box's Black Friday Cyber Monday sale. For a limited time, take an unprecedented 60% off. Go to LegacyBox.com slash toast to get 60% off your first order. Save your time and memories. Go to LegacyBox.com slash toast and save 60%. I think that's a great um, thing. And then once you get your digitized photos, you can upload them to Instagram, leading us to our fifth and final story from CNN Business. Instagram, and I brought this for you because you are like our resident like tech 
correspondent. Certainly. Um, what'd you say? Certainly. Oh, okay. I thought you said certainly. Instagram will now ask users to provide their age. Mm. Nearly a decade after its launch, Instagram is finally taking the basic step of asking people signing up for the service to provide their age in an attempt to better, young, better protect younger users. Starting Wednesday, the photo sharing service will ask new users for their date of birth when an account is created. Wow, I can't believe that when we signed up for Instagram, we didn't need to put in our date of birth. I'll share my my. Let me just get through second. all the details. Yeah. Previously, Instagram users were required to confirm their ages were 13 or older when signing up, but they didn't have to provide an exact birthday. Instagram has long valued anonymity, including not requiring people to use real names. However, as with any other online service, it's possible users can lie about their age in order to join. Quote, asking for this information will help prevent underage people from joining Instagram, help us keep young people safer, and enable more age-appropriate experiences overall. Instagram said it would use age information to recommend younger people opt for more privacy settings, such as allowing new message requests only from people they follow. The photo sharing service has been criticized for not checking kids' age, which potentially runs the risk of exposing younger users to inappropriate content and also allows Instagram to collect data about kids under the age of 13. And the Child Online Privacy Protection Act limits how a company can collect data about anyone under 13. Um, I didn't know that that was even a thing. How interesting. Neither did I. Um, what are your thoughts here, so our first, resident so correspondent? So first, this is a load of bullshit. And I'll say that it's a load of bullshit because Instagram knows exactly how old every single person is that is on the platform that has a Facebook. They oh, that's know true. exactly what their real name is if they have a Facebook. And anybody that has an Instagram business account knows that we have analytics on how old our audiences are simply because they proxy it off of Facebook. So the one thing that I do, I, I, it seems to me like they got in some type of hot water. Yeah, with, by uh, the child By protection. the child protection and that they now need to, which makes sense. Like if a, if an, a 10-year-old can just go and follow World Star because his friends like say that there's cool sneakers and all of a sudden at midnight there's just like a huge World Star. jugs in your yeah, face. Yeah, World Star after dark. World Star I after had to dark. unfollow them. Yeah, it's, I mean it's porn. It's porn. It's porn at night. Yeah, they are a 24 hour news service. Yeah, beginning in the day with your your like normal PG. Yeah, sneaker news and at the end of the day it's all. Hose. It's a little annoying. I mean, I see both sides of it because I think Facebook is so strict with who can sign up for their platform. Like we made an Inst a Facebook account called Head Toast that we could monitor um, all of our groups through and kind of just be like uh, the like us together. And Facebook took it down. And it's like we are not the problem. Like we are not, you know, uh, loitering and like you know trying to get kids. Like we're just trying to. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, we're just doing our business and, like, that got taken down. Like, I, I think, do. I think, and they're like, you need to provide six forms of identification proving that your first name is Head. It's not our first fucking name. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so it was just, like, too strict. But I do think Instagram is, like, way too loose with it. Like, the fact that, like, and, and like, that just leads to more cyberbullying and, like, so much trolling because literally no one knows anything about you because you can be so anonymous. Which is also what's nice. You know, and that's what people, I'm saying. There's a, there like should be to, a, a middle ground. People like to be able to have social media when they're not social people, they like to be lurkers. That being said, like those people with like the little anime uh, thing, like telling me that like my mother sucks cock in hell and like <laughs> yeah. I, I wishes that all of my family died in the Holocaust. And like, by the way, those people be... are never on real accounts. Like no. every now and then I'll get a, like a really mean troll message from someone's real Instagram. I'm like, damn, that's fucking brave of you. Because totally. Nine times out of 10, it's a, an account that follows zero people, has zero followers and doesn't have a picture. Like there was somebody yesterday or two days ago that commented on one of my posts, be quiet, Jew. Oh! And like under it, I wrote like, I love to start my day with anti-Semitism. <laughs> but like I clicked on it and it's like a picture of him and his wife. Yeah, see, that's fucking weird. It's weird. It's like, like do you do you know that I can now find out exactly who you are and tell your boss that you're anti-Semitic? Right, like. Be don't careful. You, don't you, like if I saw you ever like leaving a comment, like a racist comment or something on someone's Instagram, I would fucking call you and be like, what the fuck are you doing? No, but like... So it's obvious that this person who's taking a picture with his wife like has nobody in his life that cares about him and that's actually really sad. No, it also means that he's an anti-Semitic prick and that's sort of the other point. It's like I would never leave a racist comment because I don't think racist thoughts. That's true. But like anybody that has the balls to say be quiet Jew on somebody's post, what's wrong with you? I don't know. You live in a totally different world. You do. Like where you're mean to people. 
I'm sorry that that happened to you. Fuck bullies. I'm sorry that that happened to you. I love you, and I think it's you're okay. a great Jew. Thank you. A big, smart one. I am a big, smart Jew. The best, with really curly hair. I am. It's not that curly. It's pretty curly. That's no, nice. Um, I'm going for sort of that uh, Adrian Grenier. Uh, yes, you know, you know, season me. one it's me. entourage. Like, I'm really just like cool, loose, like don't care that much, but like wear a suit because like. <laughs> <laughs> Um, if you guys have any questions for Ben, feel free to drop them on the YouTube stream because that is all the content we had for today. Wow, I, I can't believe we did it. Quick. On such short notice. We yes. really shucked and jived today. We did. Shucking and jiving. Are you watching any TV that you want to discuss? Am I watching any TV? No. By the way, I see you in the feed right now. You look very thin. I do. Yeah, you look great. So this, up, is, the, this is... Sit a little up. Yeah, yeah. You look great. You look this great. This is better? No, I think you look awesome. Okay, good. And Ben's wearing a suit, you guys, like I said, because we went to a wrist today. Yeah. So I what TV it. are you watching? I don't know. I we just, started the affair. Here's the thing. Oh. I don't get to watch TV. Yeah, he doesn't. I get to start shows. I never know how they end. You finish them without me. Because you want to know why? Like, you, you have a very full and robust life. And it's like, my job is to watch TV and recap it here. So it's like, I'll start something with you. And if we go at your pace, like, I'll never finish it. And I have to come here on the toast and tell the toasters whether or not it's worth investing their time in. I understand. But so uh, that is why I watch a ton of Modern Family, a ton of Friends. It's just like shit that I can just like watch and be brain dead. Can you admit that when we first met, you didn't like Friends and now you do? Yeah, because I've been brainwashed. Oh my God, okay. I got some questions for you from the it's YouTube stream. It's a fine stream. show. This is from Liz Height. When can we expect more What Are You Nuts episodes? So I was actually just talking about this with you at lunch. Lunch? Breakfast? It was Breakfast. Early. We had breakfast. breakfast today. The only reason why I haven't released more What Are You Nuts videos is because I simply do not have enough guests to... He already went through the rounds I, in the family. I, I, I went through the family. I have a very... Very prestigious special guest for my next episode of What Are You Nuts? But after that, it's like, there are just so many people that I trust to be funny enough to come up with something that's nuts. Not everyone is a star. So what we've decided is that I'm going to do them solo sometimes because I have plenty of things, plenty of grievances to air all the time. Just a quick sneak peek. What is up with Broccoli Rob? Do you, like, <laughs> no, seriously. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. There's broccoli. There's broccolini. And then there's Broccoli Rob. Broccoli Rob is bitter broccoli. Why would you opt? You have two choices, an apple or an, a bitter apple, a juicy apple or a bitter apple. Why do people choose the bitter apple? I mean, I've never- What are you, nuts, I've, Broccoli Rob? I've never eaten Broccoli or Broccoli Rob, so I can't relate, but good for you, honey. I'm just saying. Um, so uh, soon, they're coming, more are coming. More questions from Gracie Smith. Ben, where do you shop for clothes? My husband's style is trash, it's time to refresh. If your husband's style is trash, that's on your husband. That is the truth. Any woman that tries to dress a man and change a man, you're but not she can ha help him. She can try and help him. I just, you have to want it for yourself. Like, I don't dress like this because you want me to. I dress, like, I, I enjoy fashion. I enjoy clothing. I go, I buy it. I have plenty of friends that don't give a shit. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're looking for store recommendations, Bloomingdale's is a great place. It's a great store. I, they have so many sales. I, I love Bloomingdale's. Uh, if he's bigger than me, Roth. Uh, 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 Rothman's? What's it called? No, I don't remember. Oh, Rothman's is a great store too downtown. No, nobody um, knows about this. Rochester, big and tall. Rochester, big and tall if is you're, a if store. You're, if you're a husky man. But, but if it's, you're, it's designer clothing. So they make, I didn't even know Ralph Lauren made sizes but beyond 3X because they don't sell it at Bloomingdale's, but they sell it at Rochester, big and tall. It's like a fancy ass store. They, People should they, go there. They sell everything. So if Maybe you're we'll get short, some free stuff. Fortunately, fortunately, I'm not there yet. I don't need <laughs> to shop there yet. But if you do, nothing to be ashamed of. They have great stuff. Yeah. Um, um, okay, we got a lot of questions about your ear. How is it healing? Everyone knows if you watch my Instagram live the other day, Ben had the biggest blackhead in his ear of all time that has been growing in there for almost a year, and I extracted it with my special tools that I bought on Amazon. You did. You did a great job. Thank you. My ear is totally fine. I have perfect skin, folks. That is the, that is the God honest truth. I was born with just perfect skin. I get a pimple once in a blue moon. Sure. And the only reason why I have pimples is because my wife takes her dirty ass fucking fingernails oh, and my pinches fault. my black It's my and fault. And inserts dirt into my skin. No. So if you're wondering why I had a black head in the first place, it's probably because she was picking my ear a couple of years ago and it, the dirt got infected and went under the skin and became a black head. Okay, I just have to say, at the rate at which you're answering these questions, we're gonna get through like three questions. It's just like simple questions. Um, Oh, I'm so sorry that I'm going to. Steal someone it for wants you. to know what's your biggest fear? Wow. That's a great question. My if you want to know mine, my biggest fear is being alone. I don't, I don't really like, I'm not scared of, I don't know. 
I have no clue. Okay. I've never thought um, about it. What's your biggest regret in life? From Alana Carter. I don't really have regrets either. I don't know. Every, like, it's going to be cheesy, but, like, everything bad in life you learn from, and then you become a better person. So I don't really have any any regrets. Um, okay. Is that Boring lame? answer. You don't have any regrets, and you don't have a biggest fear. Yeah, like, how about you give me some real questions here with some depth? I can, actually, you know what? Give Thank me something you. with depth. I can give you the biggest regret of your life, or what should be the biggest regret of your life. What is it? When we were dating for, like, a year... We were on 72nd Street and 3rd Avenue. Do you know yeah. what I'm about to say? No. We were standing on the corner when all of a sudden, corruption occurred. We saw TD Bank getting robbed. Oh, yes. It was so crazy. This guy ran out on foot. There was smoke By the everywhere. Way, we Wait, were, I'm not done. We were I'm not done. more than a year. Okay, I'm not done. Doesn't matter. And this guy ran out. He dropped the money and ran because the money had like a smoke bomb on it. And there was like dollar bills strewn about 3rd Avenue with red stamps and red holes in them. Remember? He robbed an ATM. And the police pulled up and they were like, where did he go? And I was like, he was wearing a Popo Polo. He went north on 3rd Avenue. They're like, all right, get in the car. Let's go. And I was like, and you were like, Claudia, we are not going. And I was like, what? I'm going to Snapchat the whole experience. And you were like, Claudia, we're not going. I'm like, okay. And then I listened to you. So that was my biggest regret in the world was listening to your dumb ass. And your biggest regret should be ever telling me not to get in the police car. We should have gone in the police car. Oh, okay. I'm is, glad you agree. The reason why I don't have too many regrets is because I don't put myself in bad situations. If something seems shady, like there's a bank robber, I'm not gonna go like looking at the bank robber, like, ooh, bank robber, what are you up to? He like, was... no, you go rob your bank, I'm gonna live my life and not uh, be near bank I robber. I watch SVU, I'm a good eyewitness. He was very thin, tall, purple polo, light wash jeans, and brown sneakers. Yep. I gave a great description. And a I wonder, bank robber. I wonder if they ever caught him. Oh, and yeah, he had red dye all over I'm his shirt. I'm positive yeah. they caught him. You think? He was on foot. Yeah. He was very fast. You know, I think he was maybe Kenyan because he was running very fast. He was. Yeah. He was. Um, okay, a few more questions. Besides Claudia, which sister are you most similar to? Hmm. Which sister am I most similar to? Yeah, like who do you relate to the most? It changes all the time. I got to be honest. At different points, I've related to sisters more and less. I used to really relate to Jackie. Now... I don't really relate to her at all. Um, she doesn't really drink now, so, like, we can't relate. No, but, like, me and Jackie are the same age. I don't know if everybody knows that. Are, yeah, like, you we're in the same grade. Same grade. Like, very similar taste in music. But now she's, like, gone more country and a little bit less punk. <laughs> I, I don't know. All of them. I, I, I relate to all of them. Um, if you... Uh could join any punk band, which band would it be? Ooh. We know you're a big third eye blind. No, 100% Blink-182. There's just no question. They are just fucking icons. This is from a YouTuber named SLC. What would your last meal on earth be? I want appetizer, main meal, dessert, and a drink. My last meal on earth. Okay. So it's dinner if it's appetizer. We're thinking dinner? I think dinner. Or like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. The meal is sushi. It is just by far my favorite. I love it the most. Um, I make it incredibly gluttonous. Everybody's like, oh, sushi, you're not going to be full. Well, you've never fucking had sushi with me. <laughs> Appetizer, you have some kind of a sashimi or a tartare. Delicious. Get a side of spicy mayonnaise. Fantastic. Then you go in. You have uh, some traditional rolls, some pieces. Uh, you cap it off with, uh, what kind of dessert? Uh, uh, I love a good cookie, but like a half-baked chocolate chip cookie, not like a hard one, not yeah. like a Tate's, like one that you took out of the oven a little bit early. And what are you drinking with this meal? Ooh, it's so tough. Probably a Diet Coke. From the fountain, from a bottle, from a can? From the fountain, the best fountain has to be a premier fountain. Some fountains are just slack. They don't cut it. I also love a good iced tea. I also love a good hot tea. I'm going to go with the Diet Coke fountain. Um, ben, have you ever cheated or been cheated on? No and no. Good. Um, Thank God. I don't think. Ben, what is your favorite quality about Theo? This is from Morgan Forey. Great oh. question. Theo has a heart of pure gold. 
if I didn't stop him, he would lick the toes of every single homeless man in Manhattan. Yeah, he, like, do, he, he just, doesn't see, he like... Doesn't, he doesn't see anything. He just sees pure love, happiness. He doesn't see danger. He doesn't see anything. He is just... But that being said, he's smart enough to know when something's wrong. Like, sometimes, like, he won't walk over grates. He's a smart boy. He's, yes. afra- he's afraid of things, but he's not afraid of people He has a sense of danger, which yes. is so crazy, because I would say maybe in the two and a half years we've had him, maybe three times has he woken up in the middle of the night and started barking, which is really creepy in the dark. Like, makes me think that, like, there's a ghost. He, he sees... I've had things with that like that with him before. He stops in his tracks and just looks at things. Like he he definitely knows. He's Can very you see perceptive. That I'm spitting. Are you spitting? I yeah, like a couple of times. Oh, I just saw your spit. I'm spitting. No, um, our show's not that high quality. Okay, good. Um, but he is not afraid of any animal. Any like I if I was him, we walk past the horses in Central Park all the time. Wouldn't you be afraid of a fucking horse? Yeah, it's like a You're this big it's a dog that's like eight. Thousand times and, your size, and we have a dog in our building that is a fucking horse. <gasps> a small child could ride this dog. It's crazy. Uh, I forget the name of the dog. Jupiter. It's a, it's a very famous dog. No, like the oh, the top, not the name. <laughs> <laughs> you mean the breed. breed? You mean the breed? Okay. Sorry. Um, but Theo and him went nose to nose the other day. He's so generous. Yeah, like he's, he's just so he's, kind. He loves everyone. So I'm definitely the best quality of him is his heart. Okay, so thank you so much for hosting. That was Thanks. such a great episode. Fantastic. If anyone wants to know more about Ben, follow him at Boy with No Job. He also has a personal Instagram. Big Soff, S O F F. We got a lot of questions about merch. Reminder that tomorrow is our big merch drop. It's happening at 1 Huge. p.m. 1 p.m. Eastern time. So that's 10 a.m. Pacific time. Mm-hmm. And then you have to figure out your other time zones. I can't figure that out for you. Um, it's dropping at 1 p.m. A lot of questions about prices. It's all of our usual pricing. There's some new items. I don't think anything is priced over $100. Um, yeah, we'll be revealing all the looks, all the items today on our Instagram. So make sure you're following the Morning Toast Instagram. I'm going to be in Canada tomorrow and Tarrytown, Westchester on Saturday. Tickets are available at girlofnojob.com for both shows. I'm also going to be in Chicago at the end of this month doing three shows there. Mm. I believe they're sold out. I'm not entirely sure. Verona, New York, I'm going to be heading upstate. Tickets available at girlofnojob.com. Kansas mm. City, Missouri, Englewood, New Jersey, Atlantic City, New Jersey. Tickets available. Do you know where they're available, Ben? Girlwithnojob.com and all capping off where? The Beacon Theater. But that's, of course, been sold out. Like, yeah, since, sorry. You since, can't like, get tickets. second. Well, I mean, I guess you could. Maybe a scalper, a scalper or StubHub. We love you guys. Thank you so much for shucking and jiving with us this morning here at the Morning Toast, the Millennial Morning Show, where we go live Monday through Friday, 10.30 a.m. Eastern Time on YouTube. So please feel free, feel free to subscribe to us on YouTube. Give this video a thumbs up. Leave a comment. We're also available as a podcast pretty much anywhere podcasts can be found. So that's Spotify, iTunes, Stitcher, Public Radio, iHeartRadio, mm. CastBox, all the apps. So subscribe to us wherever you listen to podcasts. Leave us a five-star review and a comment about how stunning, smart, and skinny we are. We love Love you guys so much. Have a great Thursday. We will see you tomorrow on Friday Merch Day. Gotta get down on Friday. Toodle.